yes, Lord. So listen, while we wait for uh, 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 some people to jump on here, uh, those of you who are new to the channel, just want to take a moment to welcome you. God bless you. You're not here by coincidence. The Lord has a right now word for you. Today, we're going to be re releasing a prophetic word. Uh, try not to be too long. Uh, uh, typically, we preach and teach and, and prophesy, and it's necessary to prophesy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is necessary to prophesy. It is necessary to prophesy. Sometimes it is necessary to prophesy unto ourselves. Come on, somebody. You see, because um, uh, we are we are engaged constantly in a spiritual battle where prophecy is a primary weapon against the strategies, the particular strategies of the enemy. Because the way that the enemy works against us is through dark prophecy. Mm -mm -mm. The enemy loves to tell you that it's never going to happen. The enemy loves to tell you that God's never going to do it. The enemy loves to tell you that you're never going to see it. The enemy t loves to tell you that it's too late. The enemy loves to see. Those are all dark prophecies. Mm, 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 mm. And so one of our greatest weapons is to prophesy, to prophesy under the counsel of the Holy Spirit, to prophesy under the unction of the Holy Spirit, to prophesy according to the word of God. See, there are things that are entitled to you as a child of God, as a believer, and sometimes you got to take that word of God and prophesy it over your own life. Some, listen, listen, I shall live and not die. Come on, somebody. So you you got to prophesy over your own life. Why? Because the word has already been given unto you as an inheritance so you can activate it, watch this, as a weapon. Mm -mm -mm. A weapon against circumstances. A weapon against situations. A weapon against depression. A weapon against loneliness. A weapon against isolation. A weapon against the fear of the unknown outcome. Meaning you got to be able to call those things that be not as though they were. Why? You think God is going to be upset with you when, when that's exactly how God moves? Come on, somebody. Are you not his offspring? Come on, somebody. You got to, you got to utilize prophecy, watch this, to your advantage because prophecy, watch this, thank you Holy Spirit, this is what the Lord just said. Prophecy is not about the crowd around you and who will criticize you. Prophecy is about the words of life. Oh boy, come on somebody. Oh, and you're right to it. See, because those who want to live and see good days, let him keep his mouth from speaking God. Come on somebody. But 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 it is it is your responsibility to fill your mouth, watch this, with words of life. But how can you how can your mouth be filled with words of life if you are not willing to prophesy? Prophecy is not about prophecy is not about the, the critique of those around you or the approval of those around you. Prophecy is a personal choice. Watch this to grab hold of what God has said, to echo what God has said, to restate what God has said, to declare what God has already spoken. And watch this, watch this. The enemy loves, the enemy works on the same, he works works on the same uh, a platform, or how do I say this? He works within the same uh, realm or the... Uh the enemy has limitations. He can't go beyond what God has not created because he's not a creator. Come on, somebody. The devil cannot go beyond what God has created. I mean, he can't implement a new structure in order to engage with us. Oh boy. Meaning if God says to prophesy, come on, if God says to speak to these dry bones, if the Lord says this, that a uh, 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 man shall, man, that means me, you and I, man, you and I, man, woman, and child shall not live by bread alone. It's not what just happens to materialize uh, naturally, but it's what we can discover what God has already written and said spiritually. Mm. Come on, somebody. And so and so if man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, does man live? Then guess what? When I want life, guess what? I got to be willing to speak it. And so, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. But there are some people who are muffled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Father, I just ask, Lord, that you remove the muffle off of their mouth, Father. There's a muffle that has been been put on the mouth of some of you through uh, uh, through the, the fear of criticism, through the fear of, 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 of looking strange and looking Looking different through 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 the through the, your of uh, the peer pressure, your your mouth has been muzzled, and so and so while you look at the words of life, you will look at the words of life in the Word of God and say, "I wish that was me." No, you got to declare that you come on. So you got to prophesy that's that's you. Why? Because the enemy does not wait. You notice how you notice how the enemy doesn't wait. 
You you do you notice how you do you notice how uh, there's no criticism for for all the negative things prophecies that you declare over yourself. The things that come by the unctioning of the demonic. Watch this. Instead of following the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Why is it that you think as a child of God, you only have access and can freely declare things that will produce death when the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue? Why is it that you can freely talk about how you never going to make it? Why is it that you can freely talk about how, how, how bad things are going to be? Why is it that you can and think that there will be no consequences? Well, actually, there may not be no consequences among, uh, amongst men because people be like, well, I guess you're right. But watch this. God calls those words vanity, meaning you're going to have to give an account for every vain word that you spoke. Empty, 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 not in alignment, not in likeness. And, and, and can I just say, and, and even when you speak in these words against yourself, do you know that it is a departure from holiness? You could be the you could be the the most sinless sinner, but if you are using your mouth, exercising your mouth to speak things that God hasn't said, then guess what? You are no longer set apart. Why? Because in order for your words to be set apart and set apart unto God, they gotta follow in line with what God has said. So if you want to talk how you feel, but yet how you feel is is not consistent with God has said, then those words are empty because they're not holy. Mm, come on, somebody. Oh boy, come on, come on, come on, come on. And so, and so, and so, and so it's important. But you notice how, do you notice how, thank you, Holy Spirit, this is why we need, this is why we need a gathering of brothers who's going to hold us accountable. Because, because if you're around the wrong crowd, they will criticize you for prophesying life, even though the Bible tells you that's your responsibility. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Oh, boy. Uh, 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 life and death is in the power of your tongue. You got to take charge over your mouth. Watch this if you want to take if you want to see a change in your life. Mm. And so and so anything that God has spoken, it's your responsibility. But people are waiting. People, we, 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 we commit the most egregious uh, 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 sin against our own souls by waiting to see who's going to give me permission. To speak life, to say to this mountain, get out of the way, to declare to my circumstances that they going to change, to declare, watch this, to my heart that God loves me and God is good. We, we, what, we have, what we do is we're waiting to see because any time a Pharisee or a demon hears a word of life, they recognize Christ and they begin to stir up the strife, watch this, in the heart of those, watch this, who don't know Christ. So when you start speaking a word of life, when you just say, you know what, you know, like, you know, uh, 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 like the four lepers, uh, if, if we could all be so courageous. The problem is we don't want to have to wait till there's a great famine on the land and, and there's no hope around where, where it's the last resort. They said these four lepers, they stood at the gate and they said, you know what, how long are we going to sit here? How long are we going to sit here in, 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 until we die? What's, what's going to be the outcome? Because there's nothing there. If there's nothing there, how long are we going to sit here? Let us go. See, because that's what sometimes what sometimes people, uh, uh, they need to be in a situation, watch this, where they have nothing else to lose. Mm, 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 mm. You don't always want to find your courage, watch this, when there's nothing else to lose. Oh, boy. You don't want to find strength when you don't want to, want to necessarily find, uh, discover the right things to do when there's just absolutely, well, you know what, I ain't got nothing to lose. Because there are people right now, they feel like what they have to lose is somebody good opinion of them. Mm. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, you know, people uh, uh, oftentimes when my wife and I are, are uh, when my wife and I are um, uh, 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 ministering and counseling, you know, and, and, and every once in a while we, we get on the phone to counsel somebody, to counsel somebody who is not accustomed to being around people who, who, who examine their communication, things that they're saying about themselves, things that they're saying about God. Why? Because everybody else is like, yeah, that's appropriate. You don't want to believe too much. You don't want to say too much. You, you, what you want to do, what you want to do is you want to talk about how bad things are, how bad things are going to continue to be. And it seemed like that particular crowd around 
around them. It's always okay as long as people are confessing that things can never change and things will, things will always be the same. They are, they feel at ease around you. Why? Because a true word of God will all, listen, a true word of God will always stir, watch this, commotion amongst the Pharisees. Don't you know this? You're supposed to be persecuted. Oh, boy. Uh, people are supposed to not understand what you're, people are not, are not supposed to understand God's good plan. Not everybody is supposed to understand. There are some people who are, who are supposed to look and be like, what? What you mean God raising people from the dead? What you mean God is healing the sick? What you mean God wants to deliver? What you mean God has a plan and a purpose? What you mean? What the, it, it's, suppo it's supposed to. But not according to every vain imagination and, 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 and it gets weird, you know, right? You know, this is why it's according to the word of God, to the will of God. Oh, boy. And so this is why you have to develop a relationship with the word of God so that you may learn the will of God. Watch this, you know, because the, the first thing, you know, we have. We have a multi-layered uh, uh, um, uh, a benefit that comes from heaven. The first is salvation, right? We're born again. The second, the second thing that we get, instructions in righteousness, is the second thing we get out of the word of God is instructions in obedience. Wow. But do you know, too many of God's children stop right there. I'm born again. This is what God wants me to do. I'll be nice to them. I'll be nice to them, right? I will judge them. I'll condemn them, right? And that's it. Is that the full counsel? And they forget about the God who said, I will be with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. They forget the God that says, watch this, that, that I will uphold you with my right hand. They forget the God that said, I will provide all your needs. Come on, somebody. They try to, they try to pretend like this God doesn't exist, like this aspect of God doesn't exist. How can you, how can you be a good steward, a good witness? How can you be a good steward and a good witness if you, if you are covering, if you are covering and purposely hiding aspects about God that God intended for life for his people? If you're trying to say these things don't exist. People under your charge, when they find themselves up against the hostility of the enemy, up against the subtle strategies of the enemy, you, you will tell them they just got to grin and bear it. Why? Because God don't answer prayers. God does not provide. Watch this. So then you just got to go to jail. No, you just got to listen. You just got to, you just got to lose your house. No, you just got, you just got to uh, go on the street. No, you just got to, you just got to, right? You just got to become homeless. No, you just got to be sick and die. No, you just got to be, you just got to do all the, why? Because God, because there's an aspect about God, watch this, that we, we deny We deny these things about God. Ah, oh, boy. Are you not supposed to be able to call on God in a time of trouble and he hear you? If those things don't exist, right, you already saved. Then what are you, what are you talking to the Lord about? What petitions? What petitions are you making? We are instructed, right? Through thanksgiving and rejoicing to make our petitions known unto. Do you know what a petition is? It is a request, meaning the Lord is like, listen, what's going on? Why is my table so empty with petitions? Lord, because we was told that you don't that <laughs> you don't answer petitions no more. That Paul made a mistake. That the, the apostles made a mistake. That there was an error. There was somehow an error in the infallible word of God. <laughs> right? And and, and 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 even worse, that we make our petitions 
without understanding because we don't know that it's the will of God. Anything we ask according to my will, I will do it. And that, that, particular, that particular word or portion of scripture doesn't even have a resting home in our heart. Do you know if I'm going to ask God for something? Come on, thank you, Holy Spirit. I love this. Wow. That's what the Lord just said. If you're going to ask God for something, and yet you have not considered this verse, your asking is going to be strained, be vulnerable to the, the spirit of doubt, and, 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 and be uh, vulnerable to be uh, 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 wishy-washy, to be topsy-turvy, up, up and down, up, up and down. Why? Because you, don't, you haven't held in your heart because I don't know how, if God heard me. I don't know if God's going to listen. I don't know if God's going to do it. Well, sometimes if you have those questions, really the only thing you need to know is, is it according to his will? That becomes an easy exegesis that you can perform to say, okay, Lord, what is your will? Let me open up this word of God and find out what your will is. Mm. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Can I just share this for somebody listening? This, this amazing revelation is about to blow somebody's mind. The Lord showed me Old Testament right now as I was speaking. He showed me Old Testament and New Testament. And he said, son... The apostles were living the New Testament. Christ was walking, revealing the New Testament through the Old Testament. So when you heard it written that all the promises of God were yes and amen, do you know where those promises came from? Yeah, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Uh-huh. Numbers 20. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Psalms, come on, somebody. Do you know where all the promises come from? Do you want to know what promises God was talking about? Yeah, those. Yeah, those promises. Were the ones where you would be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Come on, somebody. You see, because God made the distinction through the apostle, through the apostle Paul, he said all the promises of God are yes, and amen, meaning already done, already signed and sealed. But the problem is the church, through deception and the subtlety of the enemy, has lost conviction and certainty of the God who is certain. If God stands certain, why should I be in doubt? See, that the onus, the onus is not on me to bring it to pass. The onus is not on me to do it. The, the, my confidence is purely on whether or not God has spoken it. My confidence is, 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 uh, uh, rests squarely on whether or not it has been written. Because if you choose for it not to be your life, guess what? I can still choose for it to be mine. Oh boy. If you want to fill your mouth with death, watch this. I can still have the I still have the option to fill my mouth with life. If 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 because today still God puts before me life and death. And so if I have an option, if I have an option to fill my life with life and death, what would I choose? Mm. You got to take responsibility. You, you got to make a decision. Hold on. No, God is serious. The word of God is serious about, God is serious about what he says. God is serious about what he says. And I need to get serious as well. I need to get serious as well. And I need, I need to start filling my mouth because the Bible says that God will fill your mouth with good things so that your youth will be renewed like the eagles. Why? Because good news, watch this, good news, it's, it's not just that the atmosphere reacts to it, but your body reacts to it. Oh, boy. 
Even you saying it's going to be all right, your cells will be in it like, oh, it's going to be all right. I don't have to go into self-destruct mode. I don't have to I don't have to turn. I don't have to turn against you against you and become an autoimmune disease, which means I'm attacking my own self because now you have signaled your body has signaled, has targeted you as the enemy. So when you begin to declare life, your body will be like, oh, we're going to live and not die? Okay, <laughs> right? They start you know, they start believing you and they, and they come out of self-destruct mode and there, there's a regenerative process that begins. <laughs> and why is this important? I just want to I say all that to say this. There's somebody listening right now. The Lord is telling you to prophesy. Get into the word of God and prophesy. Get into the word of God and not just talk about all the money you want, not just talk about the, the foolish thing, but begin to prophesy who you are in Christ. Begin to declare how Christ is in you. Begin to declare how declare how God loves you. Begin to declare how God has a good plan for your life. Begin to declare how God watches over you. Begin to declare how God provides all your needs. Begin to declare that you are a new creation in Christ. Begin to declare, watch this, begin to declare that the footsteps are ordered. Begin to declare, begin to prophesy that there is a plan. Begin to prophesy that in God's mind, God has good thoughts, even though you've had hellish experiences based upon the warfare that you have been in, encountering. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some people get stuck on the fact that the devil is after them, but they lose the fact that God is with them. Make it make sense, church. We all do. And I'm not, you know, you know, sometimes we sit here and we like, oh, yeah, we, we talk about it. Like we talk about we talk about these uh, these uh, 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 spiritual dynamics is as, as if you uh, as if uh, 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 you, the viewer, are the only ones going through it. Come on, somebody. When in when in reality, this is a this is a common phenomena that we all deal with. Right. We all, we all have to endure. We all have to go through it. We all have, but we are all responsible for our words. Because at the end of the day, what you say, right, you're going to be held accountable for. You're going you're to be held accountable for. Right? Through your words, you will either be justified or you will be condemned. Mm. Come on, somebody. And people don't say, and people don't, you know, my wife and I were doing a Bible study yesterday on Deuteronomy 28. We were reading the second half, the less popular half, where the Bible talks about all the curses, right? And, 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 and I believe it was right around 45, 44, right around there, where the Lord said, because you didn't serve me, you did not, let this just sink in for a second. He said, because you did not serve me with rejoicing and thanksgiving for all the things that I've done. It brought upon a judgment. It brought upon a curse. <sighs> Joy is a fruit of the spirit. It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weapon of warfare. It's a disposition of heaven. Come on, somebody. And so this rejoicing, this gladness, this joy is, is, is godliness. <laughs> oh. That's why sometimes you see, you know, you see these uh, these heady Christians who are who are book smart and spiritually dumb. Right. They're book smart and spiritually dumb. They listen. They couldn't recognize a fruit of the spirit. They wouldn't know the Holy Spirit. Listen, <laughs> they wouldn't recognize the spirit of the living God if he walked right in on them. They book smart and spiritually dumb. Right. That's not that's not the balance that you want. Right. <laughs> that's not the balance that you want. Book smart, spiritually dumb. Come on, somebody. That's not the balance that I'm start, that I would that I would encourage anybody strong. Mm. Come on, somebody. I want to be it because the, 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 the joy, these things, these things have become paramount. They become paramount. And so when you look at these things, you're like, hold on, joy, 
love, peace, joy. These, all these things, love, peace, joy, patience, long-suffering, all these things are fruits of the Spirit. Do you know what that means? They're characteristics of God. Meaning, if you don't have none of them, then you're not operating in any of him. If you're not, if you're not, if you don't have any of those things, that means you're not operating in him. And what you imagine is not good enough. What you think is not good enough. The fruits of the spirit will testify of everything that your mind can't comprehend because just because you are book smart and you have an intellectual approach, it is an offense to God. And you got to be careful that you don't cross over into the offense. Watch this. You got to be careful that you don't cross over into the offense. Come on, somebody. By saying, oh, now you're going around, you're putting your mouth on everything, saying all the, what you think and how you feel. And none of the none of the none of the fruits of the spirit bear witness to your campaign. Mad, bitter, hateful, angry, right? Going all over the place, spewing hate, talking about who ain't this and who ain't that, right? You know, <laughs> right? Going everywhere, right? You know, and, 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 making, and making emphatic declarations. And the problem with that is, is that once you say it out of your mouth, you better be right. Or else you become what? A false witness. Something that God hates. Uh, no, uh, you know, don't think, see, see, when you go out, when you go around and you talking, you gotta be, you gotta know that, that, that sin right there, God won't overlook. So you gotta be right because you're making a declaration. So you better be right because if you are wrong, God is, gonna, God is not going to be like us, oh, no big deal. He's going to judge you according to the same meat that you measured out. So if you got something to say negative about somebody, you better be right. You can't be like, you ain't going to be able to stand in front of Jesus and be like, Lord, oh, Lord, what I just thought. But you know, I know you're going to cut me some slack. He's going to say, no, no, I'm going to cut you none. Oh, I know. It's going to trip you up, <laughs> right? <laughs> that $100,000 education is going to be worth about two cents when you stand before the Lord, <laughs> right? Uh, but anyway, I digress. That's not my point. So, right, uh, so it's important. The reason why I say that is because it's important. It's important for you to to, to understand that. Um, it's important for us to know that, so that we can always prioritize knowing where God is. Sometimes people don't spend enough time feeling around for God because they don't feel like they need Him. They got all the knowledge. I don't. I don't need. I don't need to feel around and and, and, and and take time to discover, is this the Holy Spirit? What is God saying? Is this God, right? Let me judge. Let me judge by the fruits. Let me examine the fruits. I don't need, why? Because I got the knowledge. You see, and this is the, this is the, one of the, the greatest sins of a haughty man is they, they, they feel like they got enough knowledge that they despise the Holy Spirit. They don't need the Holy Spirit. And because they despise the Holy Spirit, they, they, they despise prophesying. What does the Bible say, though? And then they talk about how biblically sound they are. But didn't the Bible say, despise not to prophesy? <sighs> but that's what happens when you rely, lean on your own understanding. They don't have, they don't. They don't need a Holy Spirit. They don't want a Holy Spirit. Their, their, their own Holy Spirit is their own mind. And they think, well, this, I, this is what I think about that. And so anybody who comes short of my own formation, my own understanding, needs to be, needs to be uh, uh, you know, they need to be destroyed. Anybody who got a different opinion than me, they, they don't rely on the Holy Spirit. They don't trust in the Lord. Their, their faith is not in God. Amen? So I just needed to say that. But I want to say this. The reason why this is important is because this. Today, the Lord said to me, he said, tell my people, I just want to prophesy for a moment. And the reason why I said this is because uh, uh, for whoever this word is for, I also wanted to lay a foundation for who this word could be for. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. 
This word is going to be a right now word and a word of confirmation for some. It's going to be, it's going to open, it's going to be establishing, right? But it's also going to be a word of a, a, a confirmation for others. But also, this word does not exclude on its merit. Because what, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. One of the most amazing things about the Lord is whenever he shows up, he creates an opportunity for everybody. That's why the Bible says, right, when he would go into, when he would go into a town, that he, he healed all who came unto him. And so even if he showed up for one person, he would create an opportunity for another by the preaching. That's why Jesus always spoke first. He always spoke first because those who were able to recognize, those who were able to recognize the authority to do what he was saying, the, the wisdom and the revelation of what he was saying, what he was doing was he was opening up a knowledge of God, watch this, that those during that time they did not have. He was opening up a, 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 a revelation, which means he was opening opening up access to heaven, watch this, that they didn't have. Why? Because they had to go through the high priests before the high priest walked among them. They needed, they needed, they needed the, 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 the blood of bulls and, and of goats. Watch it. They needed the blood of bulls and goats. And so when Jesus said, it's about to happen by my word, they were like, what kind of doctrine is this? What kind, uh, we haven't seen anybody move like this or do anything like this. How could this be? How could this be that there, there were there were there were so he spoke to them saying, not only am I here with the power, with the authority, I'm speaking to you and I'm revealing the revelation. I'm, I'm bringing forth an opportunity. Oh, boy. See, people, people, sometimes we overlook the nuances. You know, we overlook the nuances that allows us to really see that that allows us to really see how God was moving. Uh, how Jesus really moved. You know, they 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 were they 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 kept the feast in, in in this regard. They kept the feast, which means they still had they were still going through the the uh, operating in fully the Mosaic law. They still had a high priest. They still had a high priest. They still brought their 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 uh, uh, on every feast day. They still had to bring the appropriate sacrifices, the appropriate fat sacrifices, whether it's for the celebration or the atonement. And so when he began to say, I'm about to, I'm about to do this without the sacrifice. Why? Because he says that he, because he was the sacrifice. They were like, hold on. I've never heard anybody speak with such a power, with such authority and such revelation. What was he doing? He was qualifying people. He was giving people the opportunity. He was giving people the opportunity. Watch this to take part of what he was planning to do, what he was there to do. Oh, boy. And so what I love about the Lord is, is that sometimes we sometimes we have to qualify as men and 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 and, and women of God when we bring forth the word that we feel like the Lord has put on our heart. Uh, uh, sometimes the easiest thing to say is, you know what, this is just for you. I've been I've been there, you know. Um, this is just for some people or, you know, we don't know who this is for, or, you know, some of you, we know it's for somebody, right? But it, like, I don't know how many of you it is for, but one of the things that I love about the Lord is about the Holy Spirit. What he does for me is the foundation he lays. And I begin to understand how, whether or not, uh, 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 uh those who are on the fringes, wow, that's what you mean. I see it now, Lord. Wow. Okay, so before I started this word, I heard the Lord say sideline. I didn't know what he was talking about. Had no idea what he was talking about. He just said sideline. Had no idea what he was saying. So I, I, I just went to do the word and I just said, well, you know, Lord, lead the way. But I get it. So that nobody would be left on the sideline. And this is what this word it, it does. And, it, and what he was doing was highlighting the word, the, the need to prophesy so that, so, that, so that you would not be left out of any move of God. Because when Jesus shows up, he shows up with enough for all. Uh-oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is when you know that you are encountering Christ. Not that everybody's going to be a partaker, right? 
Not that everybody's going to be a partaker. Not that everybody's going to take. But when he shows up, you got to know he shows up with the ability, the willingness, and enough for all. And so oftentimes the foundation is laid to go against the webbing, the traps of your own mind, and to bring revelation to the darkness or ignorance of your understanding. So that you can step in, watch this, you can step into, you can step into something, watch this, that you were not prepared for. You can step into something that you would, all, that before the revelation, you wouldn't have thought you qualified for. You would have easily let that word pass you by and say, no, that's just a word for them. No, that's just a word for them. No, that's just a word for them. But what Christ does is this, anybody who can see him can benefit from him. That's why when they all came, watch this, you know, because we attribute, a, 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 the church doesn't realize this, but we attribute a level of frailty to Christ. And so you look, you may look at how many people are logged on. You may look at how many people deserve what's being said more than you. And somehow you will allow, you will automatically disqualify yourself or allow yourself to become sidelined by your own presumptions. And what gives strength to that ability to remove yourself from the grace of God, remove yourself from the flow of the Holy Spirit, is the lack of understanding that there's enough in God for you. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord says not only is there enough in God for you, there's enough in God for you right where you are. Oh, boy. You see, because the word has come to you. Oh, boy. All you had to log, all you had to do was log on. You're right. There are some people who, there are some people who just scroll by and just happen like, wait, you know, what do you know? Well, let me just see who this guy is. Right. You know, and next thing you know, boom, something is lighting on the inside of you. You don't necessarily know what it is. You're like, I don't know what this guy, so I, I don't know if I can trust him. But at the same time, I can't explain that the bell, that the baby is leaping on the inside, that my spirit is moving. My spirit is coming to life on the inside of me. There is a hope Faith comes by hearing, but faith comes by hearing by the word of God. So which means it has to be from God if it's stirring you up according to the word of God. Come on, somebody. So we have to release this meager perception of God that somehow that would allow you to always disqualify yourself. Watch this. When, but when in reality, biblically speaking, to be biblically accurate, we must at always uh, 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 address the fact that when Jesus shows up, that when Jesus shows up, he shows up with enough for all. You have not seen it anywhere in scripture that when that when the even when the multitudes, let's let's just talk about when he was, you know, when he was already tired and the, the multitudes came out and he's like, all right, you know what? Uh, you get some healing, you get some healing, right? Healing for you, healing for you, healing. Devil cast out, you come out of them, devil come out of them, right? He healed all those who were sick and oppressed with devils. But what about what about what what about what about when it's something just just uh uh, uh natural? doesn't have anything to do with spiritual dynamics. What about when people were just hungry? And they were hungry in a bunch. 5,000 plus women and children. It's about 15,000 people there. If you just take the standard practice of uh, 15, 20,000 people, if you take the st standard practice of plus women and children, so you got wives and then you got maybe one, two kids, you know, maybe more. So about 20,000 people with five loaves and a few fishes. He fed them all. The disciples was like, look, and this is what happens. You know, this is what happens. I won't say that the 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 the, the uh, you know my brothers and sisters uh, are 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 wicked by any stretch by you know having this frail mindset about Christ, right? I wouldn't say that. I would just say it's not necessarily biblical. So the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. But. He told the disciples to feed them, and they was like, what? <laughs> we ain't got enough, Jesus, for all these people. Some people got to be sidelined. Oh, boy. Some people got to be, you can't expect God to do all this for everybody. <laughs> Don't you think? And, and guess what? They probably thought they sounded just as good as christian as some of these people who come across these, some of these channels. They, they, they think they're doing God a service, don't they? They think they sound so good and christian -y. They think they're doing God a service trying to spare God because God is so weak. Spare God because there's not enough in God. I don't know what kind of God, I don't know what God you serve, but I, I serve the Most High. I serve the Almighty. I serve the one who spoke and then universes appear. 
feared. I serve the one who created all things for himself, who can do all things, who can take five loaves and a few fish. Watch five loaves and a few fish and feed 5,000 men plus women and children. Plus women and children. God always comes with enough, even when it doesn't look like it. And so if you, listen, so if you hear a word, listen, if you hear a word, of the word God is bringing forth, one of the things you want to pay attention, let's just say the word itself, the word of prophecy itself may not pertain to you. But what does the foundation say? Because God is speaking to each and every one of you, amen, that even if this word of prophecy is not for you, the, the, the initial word of prophecy that I'm getting ready to release, the foundation was. Oh boy. Meaning God says, listen, if that pro if that prophecy wasn't for you, then oh, then you do what I say and take charge over your own mouth and begin to prophesy. Come on, somebody. Begin to say, because some people, your word is you need to start saying something other than how bad it is. You need to start saying something that's in line with God. You need to, and if you need to fast, if you need to pray, to just have the courage and the strength to, to, to dare to say something good, to dare to say something that, that the word of God says, even if it's simply that God loves me. Me. Even if it's simply, even if this, even if it's as simply that God never leaves me nor forsake me, even if it's as simple as God will provide all my needs, guess what? You still got your, you still got your word of prophecy, and you still put the devil under your feet, which means defeat can't come. Somebody say defeat can't come. See, you see, because because when, once you say God provides all my needs, once you declare that over your life. A hater won't be able, a hater won't be able to regulate the, the size of the provision that comes. Oh boy. Uh. <laughs> once you say God will provide all my needs, watch this. Once you say God will provide all my needs, watch this. You put the devil under your feet and a hater will not be able, the hater will not be able to determine the size of the provision when it comes. Right? Stop arguing with people who are stop arguing with people who argue with God. Why would I argue with you? Right? We we own two different playing fields. There are some people who walk by faith. There are some people who live by the word. And there are others who just I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Right? Come on, somebody. Right? So, amen. <clears throat> so, and so <clears throat> that being said, this is what the Lord said to me. He said, tell my people I'm coming through. Can, can you sense, let me rephrase that. Let me ask this question. What have you been sensing in the air other than warfare? Because I know that there's a majority of you who this word is for. One of the things that has been prevalent is the warfare. But what have you been sensing in your spirit? And some people don't know the difference between what their spirit is saying and what the what the what the situations say. Some people listen to situations and be like, my spirit is saying this. Like, is that the spirit of God or is that the situation? Oh, boy. Has anybody do you guys know that situations will talk to you? When the children of Israel stood on the precipice of going into the promised land, the situation spoke to them and called them grasshoppers. And it was like, we can't go there. We, we ain't number grasshoppers. Who told you that? When Adam and Eve fell, right? <laughs> right? And Jesus called them out, right? And the word of the Lord called them out. They was like, you know what? We was naked. He said, who told you that? See, it wasn't the spirit of God. Everything that speaks into you deeply is not the spirit of God. That's why the Lord says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Situations speak. Hmm. Amen. Let's go ahead and get those likes up, amen, so we can make sure this thing has a, as broad as reach as possible, amen? All right, but that being said, that being said, that being said, what have you been, what have you been sensing in your spirit? Come on, somebody. 
Lord, help them get beyond, Lord, the trouble and the sorrow and the longing and the, and the, and the situations, Lord, to tune in, Lord, to discern you. Because God speaks. It's, sometimes it's not about whether or not you heard God, but whether or not you discerned him. Sometimes God speaks below. God, won't all, God does not always shout above the crisis. He won't always shout above, right? He won't always speak louder than the situations and circumstances, right? Because he wants us to be able to come, come below it, to be able to, to, to drop down beneath the, the noise. And that's how we really seek him. So we say, you know what? I don't care. And I don't care is like, you know, it helps us to like kind of, you know, it's like you're trying to drive, uh, dive down to the bottom of a pool. You know, you, you, you're doing this thing. I don't care. Right. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. Right. To cast those cares upon uh, the Lord because he cares for us. And, and, and it allows us to say, OK, Lord, what what are you saying? Right. Amen. Somebody says, I sense great change. Amen. Somebody says God's presence is always with us. It is. It is. Uh, Queen says she's about to see something she's never seen before. Amen. Miss Howard says rebirth. Yeah. Amen. Do you believe it? Mm. Amen. God's stirring the heart of his people. Brother David said promised land. Preparing us for visitation. Amen. Amen. Recompense, outpouring of his spirit, an imminent shift, amen, a change is coming, amen. Like in many ways, like there's a major shift coming, amen. It's happening, amen. Is that Brother Jared? It's amen. Come back to life, amen, sis. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it was happening. You know, you just had to walk through. You had to walk through, uh, 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 Ms. Brown. You had to walk through that. You know, there was there was so much emotional um, emotional opposition. Emotional. There were so many things that had seized your heart. Amen. And it's good to see to hear you say that you're coming back to life, because I remember we spoke before, and it was so much. There was so much that held your heart that was holding your heart and and we just rejoice with you that the lord has been setting you free from all those things that have been holding your heart that emotional manipulation of the situations and circumstances the disappointments that the lord is setting you free from all that so we praise god with you in jesus name hallelujah for that amen amen right so this is what the lord said he said i'm coming through the Lord says this, I am satisfying, I am satisfying, I am satisfying the soul of my people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, I'm satisfying the soul of my people. Wow. There, there, there is a, there, there, God is coming through and there is a, uh, a feeling, a feeling. You know when the Bible says in the book of, in, in, in Proverbs where it says, that um, um, uh, um, uh, where, the, where, where it says um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the promise comes, somebody say when the promise comes, hope deferred has a spiritual and oftentimes natural consequence and manifestation in our life. He said, but when the thing comes, it will be as a tree of life. Oh boy. You, you, you know, the, and, 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 and it has the same, and it has the same uh, uh, a reference to where the Bible says that those who wait on the Lord will be like a tree of life whose leaves, who's, who's, who give fruit in their season, but whose leaves don't wither. And even the leaves will be health for somebody else. God says, I'm satisfying, I'm satisfying the soul, which means God is bringing forth the tree. He says, why? Because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But hear me in the Holy Spirit. He says, it won't be delayed, boy. Wow. It won't be delayed. 
And, and it's interesting because you could feel the longing. You could feel the longing. But you know the, the thing, the most amazing thing about when it comes? The it comes part is so important because it coming is all about God. It coming is what makes, is what distinguishes, it separates, is what distinguishes God from anything else. The fact that it comes is what distinguishes God from anyone else. It's where God sits alone, that the one who's able to declare the thing, an end from the beginning, the one who is able to call those things that be not as though they were, the one who has life in his hands, life in his mouth. Come on, somebody. It's what distinguishes God uh, 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 amongst anybody else is the ability to bring it to pass. He said, have I not spoken it? And, ha and shall I not bring it to pass? That is God's distinguishing hallmark. It's his ability to bring it to pass. And when it comes to pass, something happens. It creates something between you and God. It creates an understanding. It gives birth to a knowledge. Watch this. And it gives, not only does it give birth to a knowledge, it creates an understanding, but it creates a, 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 a something between, I don't even know how to explain it, but it creates something uh, so personal between you and God. And it's one thing to look on the landscape and see the Euphrates River drying up and see the prophecies drying up and that and that corporately pertain to you. Oh boy. That have a corporal, a corporate relevance to, uh, uh, a relevance to you, right? The, the, the things happening that have a corporate relevance to you. It's another thing to see God come through that have a personal relevance to you. Don't think for a second that the prophecies that are, don't think for a second that the further away the prophecy is from you, the more legitimate it is. Just because a prophecy is corporate and general and very general, I believe in God about all this other stuff, but I fail to believe God about me. Oh boy, oh boy, you're, you're, you're missing the biggest point. You're making, you're missing, you're missing the most, you're missing, you're missing something very important because it grafts you in. You see, because he said to know me is eternal life. John 17, and this is eternal life, that they may know God. And that they may know his son, that, that you may know Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That's eternal life. It's something, it's something, and it's not prophecy that's been trivialized and slandered and made to be either it's of God or it's not of God anymore or it's divination or anything like that. It's communication. God is a spirit. Hello. God is a spirit. Every okay. Okay. Let me just say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. God, God saved your life. You've been saved or not, not saved, excuse me, but God, God provided the sacrifice before the foundations of the world. He called you before the foundation of the world. God has been speaking in prophecy this whole time. God was prophesying. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just say this before I go. God was prophesying over your life before you were even born. Oh, boy. Uh, is that too much? Uh, Ananias didn't know that, that God had already prophesied over Paul, over Saul, watch this, when he was in his mother womb. People warring and fighting with prophecy, well, don't you know that God was prophesying? Why? Because the thing had not come to pass yet. So God was speaking into the nothingness of creation, watch this, talking about you. So God has already been prophesying over your life. That's why you don't despise prophesying. God's already been prophesying over you. You couldn't even be born again had not the prophecy gone forth. <laughs> He'd been prophesying about you specifically. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit found you, it was about you specifically. That's why some like, well, I was the only one. I'm nervous because I'm the only one in my family that saved. Yeah, because prophecy came for you specifically. Not that it won't come for others particularly, but watch this. It came for you specifically. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh you still, you still want to despise prophecy? 
I know, I know. You see, you see how weird we get? <laughs> you, see how, you see how we can get lost in our own minds and become, like the Bible says, unwise and become foolish? You personally, he pro don't you know that's a personal prophecy? It was a personal prophecy. Oh, you didn't know that, huh? Yes. When he said, when he said, uh, 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 Lori, when he said, uh, uh, Emma, she will be mine or she is mine. He is mine. Come on. That was a personal prophecy. Oh, y'all didn't know that, huh? Mavaldo, Mavaldo is mine. Regardless of all the things you had to go through, there was a prophecy watching over you. So even if you spent time in the club, even if you spent time on drugs, even if you spent time, you know, uh, 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 going through all these things, there was a personal prophecy spoken over your life. This is why you should. This is why you should never allow any devil, any denomination, to keep you from the love of Christ, to keep you from experiencing the personal intimacy that Christ has that that Christ has displayed over your life. It was always personal. The only prophecy you believe in is a corporate one. <laughs> Miss Townsend will be mine. Miss Townsend is mine. Linda K is mine. Miss J is mine. Jared is mine. Come on, somebody. Alex is mine. All the Caldwells are mine. He said, that whole house is mine. Come on, somebody. Come on. That's a personal prophecy. That's why it found you and came to pass, and it hasn't found others yet. <clears throat> Not that it won't. Not that it won't. But what you can know for sure is, is that there was a personal prophecy for you. Do you think that God begins something that he's not looking forward to finishing? Oh, boy. Do, do you really think that God began a good work and looked in his pockets and felt like he was bankrupt? He turned, you know, he's, he, his pockets went rabbit ears and, right, like, I ain't even got enough. I started the foundation of this thing. I ain't got enough to fix it, man. I, you know what? Can I borrow some money? Let me see. You think, we'll, 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 right? Let me go ask this Pharisee over here. Do you think it's, is it all right with you if I, if I finish what I started, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, come on. It's, it's absurd. Amen? But the Lord says this. He said, I'm coming through. And there was just this deep sense that the time had come where, where, where God was bringing an end to the, to the, uh, 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 the sickness of heart. Oh, boy. That the tree of life was coming. And the tree of life comes when it comes to pass. That's God's system. That's what the Lord ordained. And the Lord says this, it will not delay. Amen? Amen? Until next time, God bless you all. We love you all. Talk to you soon.